And Ajahn, can there be degrees of, say one's mindfulness grows and, and one detects, you know, as, as my own practice has moved in life, I know I've felt a sometimes a very strong calling in one direction, say it's what drew me to robes. And I don't know how to articulate it, except something around maybe the voice of Dhamma or intuitive awareness or something like that. Where does that fit in? Is that the knowing element informed by wisdom? Is there a touch of the deathless in that? Um, where does that voice come from? Of your past. You have past lives. You, you have millions or countless past lives. And each life you might have experienced something which might remain in your, in your mind and which can be the... This, be, be the one talking to you from time to time. So, so we all have, maybe in our past life, maybe we have met maybe a few Buddhas before, but we might not have yet uh, learned the teaching to the level where we can become more, you know, more advanced, let's put it that way. But we will probably run into a lot of teaching, different teaching also, maybe some Christian teaching, some Muslim teaching in your past life. So all this can be accumulated in your mind. And they, may, they can might come up like deja vu, right? We say deja vu. Mm. Thank you. Tanajan, um, there are some forms of Buddhism that say specifically that Nibbana is always here and that we just don't don't realize it and and there's a sutra in the Anguttara Nikaya that says the mind is luminous and it's just the kilesa that pass by as visitors and i'm curious is is nibbana always present if it's always present then we should be in nibbana right now <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Uh, if this person has been blocked by, by the clouds of delusion, let's put it that way. Once you can remove the clouds of delusion from your mind, then Nibbana will, will reveal itself. So it's our task to remove these clouds of delusion by the practice of Vipassana, <laughs> with the support of the practice of Samatha and the practice of Sila then we will be able to remove the clouds of delusion from the mind. Once the, there are no longer clouds of delusion, then Nibbana, uh, enlightenment, full enlightenment will, will, will appear. It's in the mind, in our mind right now. It's just flipping the mind from delusional to become enlightened. So. Thank you, Tanajan. Uh, you had mentioned like past lives. So past lives, future lives, rebirth, heaven, and hell. These are things which come up all over the place in the Pali Canon. And it's something which in Thailand, many people just take for granted as a matter of faith, but it's something which many Westerners have a hard time understanding. They, uh, how, how do you talk about rebirth to Westerners? <laughs> well, they have to understand the diff the, the the, the body and the mind are two separate entities. Yes. Okay. The mind is the master. The body is like a puppet. Yeah. It's the mind who tells the body what to do. Before you can say anything, you have to think first, right? Before you can do anything, you have to tell, oh, oh, I want to drink, so you go and drink. I want to eat, so you... It's the mind who tells the body what to do. Okay, but unfortunately the mind is invisible. That's a problem. We cannot, we cannot see the mind because the mind has no body like the body. But it's the mind that is working all the time, not the body. The body doesn't think, the body, the body doesn't know anything. The body is like an automobile. Does an automobile think? I should be going to this, this or that place? No, the automobile just sit there and wait for the driver to tell it what to do. So this is, you have to understand the, this fundamental truth first, that the body and the mind are two separate entities. They just happen to combine at the time of conception. 
when the when 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 half um, the part come from half of your well, half of it come from your father and half of it comes from your mother, which are the what the sperms and the eggs. When they join, then the knowing element come into process or come into connect with. I'm not sure when or how this is connected, but it is this is when the the, the mind come into connect with the body. <clears throat> and then when the body comes out of the womb, then the mind can then start to tell the, the body what to do. Cry if you want something. Smile if you're happy, for instance. <clears throat> it's not the body doing this, it's the mind doing this to the body, to the body. Dhanajan, in terms of seeing through this automobile, <clears throat> yeah. feel, um, in terms of seeing through the body, I know as monastics, we're encouraged to use a suba practice and body contemplation a lot. I wonder <clears throat> you, how much you recommend a lay man or lay woman do this, especially if they're in a committed relationship. Um, is there a place for a suba practice, contemplation of the unattractiveness of the body for a lay practitioner? And if so, how would they regulate balancing that with a romantic committed relationship? Only when they want to follow the eight precepts. If they don't follow the eight precepts, there's no need for them to contemplate on a supa. See. Only when they want to take the spiritual path, that's when they have to start contemplating on, on the sukha. Because if you don't, your sensual desire or your sexual desire will keep pulling you away from your spiritual path, <laughs> pulling you back toward the, the sensual path. So that's when you want to develop a sukha. And when you ordain, the first thing you are taught during ordination is a sukha without you knowing it the five objects, right, that you have to study right away. It's just a, a beginning of teaching you just the five, the first five objects. But ideally, they want you to go on, continue on after your ordination and go through the 32 part. So this can reduce your sexual desire when you see the body as, as being unattractive. But other than that, don't worry about teaching other people. <laughs> worry about teaching about yourself first, how you can overcome your sexual desire. You know? But as far as lay person is concerned, we normally don't teach them a sutra. We teach them dana or sila first. If, they, if they're not keeping the five precepts, we teach them the five precepts. If they still would like to, to, to find pleasure in vice like drinking, gambling and entertainment, going to entertainment venue, we teach them they should avoid this first. Yeah. Jana, on line with the five precepts, um, I think most people in the West agree, you know, are fairly willing to accept the first four. The fifth one, especially when it comes to say, you know, a common line one would hear in Western Dharma circles is just, what's wrong with a glass of wine? you know, it's just a glass of wine. It's, I'm not getting drunk or anything like that. What would you say to that reaction to the fifth precept? Like, how would you encourage someone, you know, what is wrong with a glass of wine? Um, well, what, what is wrong with a glass of wine? There's two more, more glasses of wine. <laughs> See, that's why you have alcoholic synonymous, right? Hmm. That's because they started with just one drink. But one drink will lead to the second, to the third, and fourth, and eventually come to it addiction. See? So to be safe is just to not to touch it at all, because you never know when you just when you when to stop when you start to take one drink, and you say, oh, never mind, one drink is not another drink probably will be okay or so. Yeah. And Tanajan, on the note of a suba, um, I've heard some teachers say that. The contemplation of the elements is a far more advanced practice than the contemplation of the unattractiveness of the body. And I've met some teachers who mm -hmm. they almost all they speak about is 
the four elements. Um, what is your feeling of the difference in the aim and results of those two contemplate contemplations of the body, asuba versus the elemental contemplations? They have different purpose. Asuba is to get rid of your sexual desire. Why the four elements is to get rid of your delusion of seeing the body as a self. There's no self in the body. All there is is just the four elements. So it's it's different purpose. And you need both. You need both in order to, you need to see the body as the four element in order for you to let go of your attachment to, to your body. So, so that when the time of death comes, you will not, you will not have any suffering when your body dies because you see it's just four elements like an automobile. It's just made up of plastics, glasses, metals, and rubbers, for instance. So it's a different purpose then. But with, with, well, continue on with the automobile uh, analogy. You look at the automobile, sometimes you become impressed because it's so beautiful, like a Ferrari. You know? <laughs> but if you open up the hood, for instance, and take up all the covers and see the engine inside, then you say, oh, it's not that beautiful at all. Mm. So that's, that's a super. See? Uh, John, just maybe uh, maybe a couple more questions. The, so many people say that the human realm is the best realm for practicing Dhamma, but with global warming and cultures changing everything, westernizing and becoming less Buddhist all over the world, um, do you still, if someone did want to be reborn or does not achieve stream entry in this life, does it really make sense to want to be reborn as a human, or should one aim higher? Maybe go to a deva realm where they still can learn dhamma. Well, it's not something like launching a rocket and flying to the moon or to to Mars. You know, you cannot predict when when will you be reborn as a human being again, because there are karmas that will come into play. All the karmas that you have accumulated in this lifetime will be determining where you will. Be where will, you will go next. You might not take a human birth for a while yet, after you die. You might be existing as a spiritual being, a happy one or a sad one, depends on your good or bad karma. Until this karma more or less expire and then can no longer influence your, your mind, then maybe it's time for you to take a human birth. And taking a human birth doesn't mean you have to take a human birth on this earth. There might be thousands of other earths that are humans around that you can take a birth. And then you don't know, see. Do you think there's only one, one, one earth in, in this entire universe that has human being existing? It, Tan Chan, is it a matter of just a, a different world? Like somewhere That's in the right. a different universe? earth, a different earth, a different planet. Ah, okay. There might be a thousand of them. The problem is we cannot connect with them. So we don't think if they ever exist. But thinking of the, the, the possibility of the mind being able to travel through space and time, you know, by just a blink of an eye, the Buddha say, you're already there you know, in, in, on another planet. You know. So I don't want to stress this point too much. It's just something that you 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 can consider and, and think about. You know? But I, I think that there's a possibility that you can be reborn in a world in a in a world or on a on earth on another earth which is more advanced or more or less advanced than we are now. So eventually, since we are not gonna stop reborn, we will be reborn on a on, on an earth somewhere, on a planet somewhere, and continue on with our, our cravings, for instance. So it depends on what you have accumulated in this life. In this life, you have accumulated some, some desire for spiritual endeavor. So maybe in your next life, when you're reborn as a human, you might continue on this endeavor if you happen to come across 
uh, uh, a teacher or a monastery or some or for some form of, of practice that align with what you like. You know. This what this is what causing you to become a monk because maybe in your past life this is what you have been used to doing before. So how come not everybody doing the same thing as you do? That's because not everybody did the same thing that you did, right? Anajan, I think we maybe one more question, if we may. Okay, go ahead. Uh, no problem with me. You can talk as long as you like. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm wondering, you know, I, I think a, a goal, you know, uh, so many of us practitioners have is, um, you know, obviously to to end this cycle of rebirth and craving that you've so clearly articulated during this whole interview and the suffering, which we all experience like that. And stream entry, you know, that first taste of the deathless um, certainly is, is a goal for me. I, I would wonder, I think that attainment gets underestimated in the West at times and really kind of downplayed as, fairly easy for people to access um, to the point where there might be quite a bit of overestimation. If one, what would Tanajan advise in terms of trying to move towards that goal in terms of one essential piece of advice? And if one attained stream entry, how would one know? And would one remember? And you, you know, what, yeah. It's not remembering, it's being. See? Being a sotapanna is not remembering being a sotapanna. Once you are sotapanna, you don't forget. <laughs> and, the, and the character of a sotapanna is one who is not afraid of death, one who is not afraid of pain, not, not afraid of aging, sickness, and death. Because he had developed true wisdom that seeing that the body is not himself, he is the mind, who just happened to possess this body, that's all. So even if he has to take another human birth the next time, he will still have no, no fear of death, no fear of aging, sickness, and death. But he still has sexual desire because he hasn't yet got rid of that. So for, for Sotapanna, the next level is to develop the practice of a supa to be able to see at all times, every time you see a body, you see the rest, the whole, the whole, the whole 32 part, not, not just the, the part outside. You can go see right through into the body, under the skin, see the skeleton, see the intestine, see the heart, lungs, and so forth. Or see when the body dies, see the body as being a corpse, then he will be able to get rid of his sexual desire then he will become an anagami. Then with that, he would no longer take a human birth anymore. That man would no longer, because there's no interest for, for him to take a, a human birth, to take a body, because he has no desire to have any sexual pleasure anymore. Tanajan, I, I do think we have to go. We, we also have to go. I know, yeah, we have to go to do your morning duty now. This evening for me here, <laughs> this morning for you must be what, nine o'clock, so about six o'clock now for you. They am, but Arjun, it was, I'm so grateful to have, you know, I've met you a few times in person, as is Ajin Kovilo, and, and every time I, I find I'm, I'm very moved, and I'm so grateful for you taking the time to speak with us today. Ajahn Kovilo, did you ever come to Thailand before? I lived in Thailand for six years and I oh, came. Six years. You came to see me also? I, did, I didn't remember. Okay, my time. By the way, if anybody, this will be put on your YouTube page, right? So maybe if you know the link, you can send it to me. Maybe will. I will post it on my Facebook page in English. And for whoever listening to this talk, if they want to follow my, my, my teaching, I have Zoom meeting in English every Tuesday night at, at the same time at 8 p.m. Thailand time.
every soon, every Tuesday night to about 10 o'clock, about two hours. And people can come in and ask questions. And also I have another live Q&A on Sunday, tomorrow, during about 11.30 Thailand time, this during the day. So it must, it must be about what? Eight o'clock at night for you. You have about three hours after me. So this this is not using Zoom. It's just me with the, the camera live, and people sending the question by typing in the in the commentary section, and I read it. I read the question and then I, I answer the questions. So just in case people if people want to ask me a question, they can still come in and and ask me on Sunday evening for your time or 11.30 or so my time. And another one is Tuesday night at 8 p.m. my time, which is about 5 p.m. Pacific time. At 5, 5 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, it's well worth getting up that early for those who are listening. And you can find that all on Ajahn Suchan's Facebook page. Yes. And you have to search the word Ajahn Suchan, Apichato, Dhamma for the asking. Right? Can we pay respects? Sure, please go. Just do. I hope you pay more attention to your practice and trying to teach people. You can teach them if they're interested, but you know, just only teach what you know. Don't teach more than what you know. And try to get yourself enlightened first. If you haven't yet been enlightened, if you're enlightened already, then there's no problem. Watch it on the Okay. Nice to see you, nice to talk to you, and hope everything goes well for you in America. Thank you so much, Tony Junker. All right. Goodbye for now.